Okay, we're now ready to finish up part one of this review. There are two problems left, problems 25 and 26. So let's do, uh, we'll just do problem 26. They're both similar. It says find six trig functions if the point negative two, three is on the terminal side of the angle theta. So basically they're giving us a point like an X and a Y, so we need to think about once again our XY coordinate system. Let's go ahead and plot this point, so negative 2, 3 would be right here, so that's my point. And basically, when we look at an angle here, the starting side is always the positive X axis. So in a sense, what we're doing now we have this angle theta. So that point they give us helps to form the terminal side of the angle. So there we go. So basically, this is a problem where we need to find the trig functions for this angle. First thing I notice is it's in quadrant two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna form my right triangle. So here's one of the principles of trig, which we talked about some, but instead of looking at the actual initial angle, I'm going to instead look at what we call the reference angle. I'll call it theta r, because the cool thing about trig is all the trig functions for the reference angle will be the same as the trig functions for the original angle. So in a sense, instead of having to try and figure out this original angle, I can just look at, I can create a right triangle, and of course I know this distance is two, this distance is three, so it's almost like I have a triangle with the bottom length two, this leg is three, I'm gonna call this my reference angle now I can find the trig functions for that reference angle and it's actually going to be the same as the trig functions for the original angle. And that's one of the nice things about trig. The trig functions for our reference angle is the same as the trig functions for the original angle. So if I can find the trig functions for this little triangle, I've got the trig functions for my original angle. So, same routine as always. I need to find the hypotenuse here. Two squared plus three squared is gonna be the hypotenuse squared, I'll call it x. Four plus nine looks like 13 equals x squared. Looks like this hypotenuse is gonna be square root of 13. So now, the only thing I have to be careful about now, since once I do these trig functions, let's remember my actual initial angle is in the second quadrant. So I have to attach the right signs. So if I do the sine of theta, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, three over square root of 13. Cosine of theta adjacent over hypotenuse, but you know what? The cosine is going to be negative because I'm in the second quadrant, so I'll say negative 2 over square root of 13. 
the tangent opposite over adjacent TOA. Once again, the tangent is negative in the second quadrant, so I put a negative opposite over adjacent. Let me just quickly do the cotangent. That's pretty simple. It's the reciprocal of the tangent. Negative two-thirds. Cosecant of theta. Reciprocal of the sine. Square root of 13 over 3. The secant of theta is the reciprocal of the cosine negative square root of 13 over 2. And there we go. So that actually finishes up part one of the review. And in the next video, we will start looking at some of the problems off of the second part of the review.